How you doing there? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Kuf Yud Gimel, Daf 113 of Masechet above the Common Friends, Friends, Friends. Um, all right. Well, what do you want me to tell you? It's an interesting Daf. I think. I think. I think. I think. Let's do it. All right. I think I should have enough time even to finish recording before Shabbos, which is great because I've been running out of time recently. Um, but yeah, it's not such a hard daf. It's an interesting daf. daf. Um, okay, we're going to start in daf Kufyud Gimel, Amud Aleph, at the Mishnah, about halfway through the Amud. Um, so we're going to do all of Kufyud Gimel, and we're going to get to the Mishnah on daf Kufyud Dalid. So yeah, it should be a good daf. Okay, a little bit big, but um, yeah, but not particularly difficult. Okay, says the Mishnah, Ein porten lo mitevas hamochsin. Velomi kis shel gaboin ve notlin meem stoke avon notel hu mitoch beso o min hashuk. So says the Mishnah again. Important lo mitevas a mochsin. So if you have a, a, a mochis, what's a mochis? A moichis. A moichis. Can I say moichis? It's funny, right? A moichis. If you have a moichis and, and he, um, so 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 what so what's a moiches? It's um I don't know a tax collector or something. Okay. Vlomikis shel gabo. So you can't so you can't like um so if you need like if you have a, if you need like change like you know small lifrot means like to right you know like if you have like a two hundred shekel bill and you want lifrot into like fifties, so don't go to the tax guy. And be like, oh yeah, you have lots of cash. Can you can you give me you know four fifties for a two hundred? Um, don't yeah. So 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 don't do that. Let me kiss shel Nor from the I don't know wallet of the gabayin. These were like it seems like some other kind of tax. I don't really understand the difference between the different kinds of taxes. I don't know, maybe one's like municipal and one's like the king. I don't really know. They know the name stucca and you don't accept stucca from them because the assumption is that there's like theft going on over there. But if you go to his house and you ask him to, you know, uh, uh, to give you change, you know, to give you change or whatever, or if you if you uh, see him in the sh- in Shuk Machni Yehuda, you'd be like, yo, bro, you know, can can you break a a, a two hundred for me? So Seder. Tana says the Gemara, no lo dinar no lo es hashar. Now, however. You know, if your taxes are, you know, a hundred dollars, uh, or you know, so we talk shekels because in shekels is a two hundred shekel bill. So let's say your 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 tax bill was one hundred shekels, and you all you have is a two hundred. So you can give him the two hundred, and they'll give you a hundred change. That that that's acceptable, because you know, if you don't if you don't you know just eh, just if you can get change, get change and get the heck out of there. So it says. That uh, you can't you can't uh, you know break up a uh, break up a bill uh, with a moiches. Very interesting. But Shmuel says dina de malchusa dino. The law of the land is the law, and if the law of the land is to pay taxes, so there ain't nothing wrong with paying taxes, and the tax man is not a thief. Bar Kehano Amashmul Bimoches Shein Lo Kitzba. Yeah, but this is not just any tax man. This is a tax man who's Tikkun Yeshivish. He uh, he basically uh, he takes a look at you and says, "All right, you thousand dollars." And takes a look at the next guy, you twenty five dollars. Shtukli Yeshivish about it. You know he's uh, not exactly going by the books. Uh, anyways, so b'moiches shel shein lo kitzba. Okay. The verbiane amri b'moiches omin me'elav. Okay. Says by b'smedrav verbiane, we talk about a uh, self-appointed tax man. Sounds kind of like protection money, you know. Um, you know, a guy who just makes up different taxes that he's going to impose upon the people. So yes, these 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 would be considered um, unruly tax people, and they would be considered. Thieves. To those who have this discussion about the unruly tax people on the following. So I, I'll be honest, I, I feel like the flow here is a little funny with this next section. I'll do the best. I'll do it. I'll do it how I do it. How's that? Does that work? 
So you get the master of the Ahab. Lo yilbash odum kilayim. Oh, do I have to sneeze? One second. A fellow should not wear kilayim, right? You shouldn't wear linen and wool together. Afilu al gabe asar begodim lavriach bo es hameches. Right? Even if you want to avoid uh, customs, right? I think, right? So the point is like, you know, you, you just land in a, a, a natbag in a, a Namal Tufa Ben Gurion, a Ben Gurion airport. Um, and um, you get to the Meches and you don't want them to know that you have all this clothing. So you, so you wear 10 layers. Now the 10th layer is uh, linen and you have wool underneath. So, so... So, so lo yilbash adam kilaim afilu al gabi asari bugadim. A person should not wear kilaim, even if it's on top of ten garments. La biach bo sameches in order to uh, keep away the tax man, the customs. Masnis is lo krabakiv. Okay, so mission is not like krabakiv. The tani that we learned by so also la biach sameches. It is forbidden to, uh, um, you know, try to fool the tax man. Reb Shimon Omer. Mishum Rabakive Mutulavriach Esameches. You're allowed to fool the tax man. That's good. Bishlomo, um, well, the customs people. Bishlomo Leinian Kilaim. So I understand uh, uh, with regard to uh, uh, customs people. If you're listening to this, I'm just kidding. Um, anyways, uh, so. Uh, so I understand. Okay, fine. So I understand by kilayim. So I guess if there's a machloikis about kilayim, whether or not you can uh, wear kilayim in such a manner, meaning not because you're interested in wearing kilayim, but because you have some kind of secondary reason, in this case, to fool the customs people. Mutter, my sover, dovish ain't, wait, what? To my sover, dovish ain't, miscavin, mutter, my sover, dovish, miscavin, osser. Okay, so I can understand. One opinion would be that you'd be allowed to uh, um, um, wear kilaim in this manner since it is not your intention to wear kilaim. Uh, it's just in your intention to evade the customs people. Um, so, okay, and if you say that, it's still nonetheless not allowed. It's because Dover Shein Miskavin is Osir. Okay, fine. bo mi shari. But I don't understand. Would anybody say that that it's permitted to uh, um, try to sneak away from the customs people? Vamer Shmuel Dina de Malchusa Dina. But Shmuel says that the law of the land is the law. So how can you sneak away from the customs people? Evade the customs people. Omar Reb Chanino Bar Kehano Omar Shmuel Be Moiches She'ein Lo Kitzba. Well, we're talking about customs people that are yeshivish, that they, um, you know, they kind of make it up as they go. There's no official uh, tax brackets and things. Devei Reb Yanei Ami Be Moiches Ha'omid Me'elav, a self-appointed tax imposer. Those people you can evade. Vika Damasne Lo Aho. And those who teach it on the following. Nodrin la rogin vlachromin vla mochsin. So a fellow can make a neder. Chever, we learned mesechta nedarim, right? You say, I'm not, Rashi says, I'm not going to have any of the pizza. What? No, Rashi doesn't mention pizza. Was In Rashi's day, was pizza invented yet? In what year did they invent pizza? Before they invented pizza, was there pizza? Hmm. Oh gosh, that must have been a whole machloikis when they invented pizza and then somebody said, what are you talking about? I've been making this for years. I mean, Bessim is just dough, sauce, and cheese, right? Interesting, Shiloh. I'll upon him. Um, so, 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 so a guy, he makes a nether, he says, I'm, you know, if, 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 if this, uh, let's go weiter, uh, um, where am I? Right, a fellow says, look, if this, if this stuff over here is not, if these fruits are not trume, or if this does not belong to the king, I will never eat any fruits in my life anymore. Right? He makes a nether basically to keep away, I don't know, uh, um, 
murderers, uh, chromin people. What are chromin people? Baile tigra mariva. Uh, like sounds like mobsters, uh, uh, tax people. So you can do these like netters to kind of keep these people away. Alpha bisha eno shaltruma. Alpha bisha eno shalmelech. Even though it it isn't actually true, or it isn't actually um, belonging to the king, but to kind of keep these people away. Vlamochsin, how come you can do this for the tax people? Vamer Shmuel, dinet machusadino. Shmuel says the the law of the land is the law. Amar Chanino ba Kehano, Amar Shmuel b'moches she'ein lo kitzba. It's talking about a yeshiva shemoiches uh, who uh, who uh, who um, you know he just kind of makes it up as he goes. Self-appointed Moiches. Ravashi Omar says, Ravashi B'moiches Kenaini. So when we say, uh, I assume it's talking about in the Mishnah, you know, when we're saying, considering the Moiches to be a, a, a thief, we're talking about a Moiches Kenaini. The Tanya, as we learn in Abraise, Yisrael the Kenaini Anos Shabo Lodin, if you have a Yid and a Kenaini who come to who have a case, a court case. If you can uh, uh, make the, I assume it's saying, if you can make the yid innocent by relying upon uh, uh, Jewish laws, so zakeu rely upon the Jewish law. The emorlo kach dinenu and say to the kanani, look, this is our law. zakeu. If the yid would be innocent if relying upon kanani law. So Zakeu make the yid innocent vemorlo and say to the Kanani, Kach Dinchem, look, this is your law. Your law says that the yid is innocent. Vimlav, and if neither uh, um, uh, law uh, um, law law contexts make the yid innocent, boy in all of Bakifin. Sounds like you can be kind of tricky, I guess, in order to make him innocent. Divra Bishmo. And so Rabbi Shmuel says, Rabbi Kiva Omer says, Rabbi Kiva ain boyin olav by kifin. Vipne kiddush Hashem. We don't uh, play games over here and try to be sneaky because we need to make a kiddush Hashem. We have to sanctify God's name. We don't, I assume the point is that we don't want a chas v'shal make a chilul Hashem. And if you kind of, uh, you know, play games over here um, in order to be um, um not forthcoming is that the uh, way to say it? Uh, you know, to be a shtickle, uh, sneaky, sneaky. So it's it's gonna it's it's not going to reflect well on the Abishter. Rabbi Kiva, time dika kiddush Hashem. So Rabbi Kiva is just concerned, you know, technically because you know if if it, you know can look it can look terrible for for the Abishter. Haleka kiddush Hashem, but so long as there's no issues of kiddush Hashem, so boy. So, said it, you would be able to be technically be sneaky as long as no Kiddush Hashem. As long as, long, as long as there's no violations of Kiddush Hashem. Vigezel Knaini Mishari. Now, but is it permitted to steal from a Knaini? Vatanib, we learned it by So, Amrib Shimon says, Rib Shimon, there was a Darish of Akiva. Rib Akiva Darish in the following Kishaba Mizfirin. When he came, I assume it means when he came from a place called Zfirin. Minayla Gezel Knaini Shu also. How do you know that you're not allowed to? Gezel a knaini. How do I know you're not allowed to steal from a knaini? Tamalamar achri nimker gula tielo. That if you have a yid who sells himself as an ever to a knaini, so we say that we have we have to try to redeem him, right, to get him back. And we say gula titenlo. You have to you have to buy him back. You can't just sneak him back. Shlo ya shelo yim shechenu Right? Don't uh, don't don't just like. Uh, do a rescue operation and, and get him back. Yochel Yiglum Olav, and is it possible that that um, that uh, you should cave to delusional demands for like uh, absorbent sums of money in exchange for the release? Tamadomar v'chishav im ko nehu. So it says that um, yeah that 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 you work it out with the person who with the acquirer. You know, negotiate a fair um, purchase back. Omar of Yosef says of Yosef, so meaning on the one hand, we're talking about being sneaky, sneaky. On the other hand, we're saying that right, you're not allowed to steal from a Kanaini. Omar of Yosef says of Yosef, Lo kasha, it's no problem, ha be Kanaini, ha be 
Toshev. So it depends. A Knaini, you're allowed to steal from. A Ger Toshev. A Ger Toshev is a, basically somebody who observes the Shev Mitzvah's B'nai Noach. He's not a Yid, but, uh, but, but, he, you know, he's, 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 he's a, a, no, a Hyde uh, fellow. Omar um, Le Abaye says Abaye to Rav Yosef, but one second, but, but both of them are referenced in that Pasuk. Both a Ger Toshev as well as a Kanani are referenced in that Pasuk that says that you buy him back for a fair price. Lo Lach, right, that the Eved, that this Yid doesn't sell himself to you, Elo Lager, rather to a Ger, Shenemer Lager, for the Lager Tzedek, we're not talking about a proselyte, Elo Lager Toshov, rather we're talking about a Ger Toshov, a, 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 a non Yid who lives among you, Shenemer Lager Toshov, Mishpachas Ger Zeo Oved Kuchov, or a Oved Kuchov, right, or even a Knaini, Kshu Omer, Ole Eker, Zanimker Lavoides Kuchov, and I guess the Pasuk also refers to somebody who's Mamish sold to Gechkis. So, so we see that in all of these scenarios, uh, he has to be bought back for a fair price. He cannot be stolen back. Hello, my Rove. Rather says Rove Lokasha, Khan, Big Zelo, Vikan, Bafkos, Ava. So it depends. You can't steal from a Goy, but uh, from, 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 from a Kanani. But you can, um, but if it's Avkos, Ava also, um, kind of, you know, with, with you know, uh, um, 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 releasing a loan, so I guess, uh, you know, in the context of like, I guess maybe like the customs or, or, or something like uh, that, you know, kind of preventing, uh, I mean, you can't steal, but um, I don't know, somehow like if you're like, uh, like canceling a loan kind of thing. So then Abai says, uh, uh, so then Abai says to Rava, but yeah, if you think about it in Evid Ivri, for example, so the assumption is that his his goof will not will not be acquired by this Kanaini who purchases him. It's just that he has a commitment to this Kanaini, and and so if that's the case, shouldn't you be able to just take him back without paying? Because it's just basically canceling a commitment as opposed to stealing something. So Rava the time of Rava Evid Ivri Gufo Kani. Well Rava actually doesn't see it like that. Rather he says that in Evid Ivri Gufo Kani, that uh, actually his goof, his actual goof is uh, belongs to the Kanani, and therefore it would be stealing if you take him uh, back without paying. Amr Bevai Bar Gidl Amr Sherman Khsida Gazal Kanani Gazal Kanani Osir. It is forbidden to steal from a Kanani. Avidosu Muteris. But his lost object is a different story. If a Kanani loses something, you can take that. Gazelo um, Osir, stealing from him is also the Omer Rav Huna Minayin Legezel Akanani Shu Osir. How do we know that it's forbidden to steal from a Kanani Shneimer? The Pesach says, "Vachalta Eskol Amim Mashashem Lokecha No Sin Loch, No Sin Loch, No Sin Loch." So that you can consume the nations that the Eibushter uh, gives to you. Because once you misurim biyadcha. When they are um, um, given over to your control, then you can, you know, consume from them. But not if they are not um, in your control, and therefore you can't just steal from Kanaanim in general. Avidosum uh, Muteris, their lost objects are permitted. The Amr Rav Chama Bar Guria, Amr Rav Minayin Avidas Hakanaani Shu Muteris. Shu Muteris. How do we know that the lost object of a Kanaani you can take? Shneimer the Pasuk says Zuchol Avidas Achicho. Well, any lost object of your brother, you return to your brother, you don't have to return to Kanani. But maybe I'll say that no, all that means is that if you see that uh, a, 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 a Kanani lost an object, you don't need to like go and pick it up and collect it and return it and do the whole thing. Uh, right, maybe that's what it means. But if you if you do pick it up and you do have it, well then, I will say at that point you do have to give it back. Meaning all things, you don't have to go out of your way to like retrieve it and find him. But like, uh, but maybe if you have it, you certainly at that point would need to give it back. No, the puzzle says What does the puzzle say? The puzzle says that when it says by Hashavas uh, Avedu Mitzasa that you find it implies that it, it's in your hands and that's the but not uh, the Oved Kichov. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Tanya. Um, 
Reb Pinchas ben Yoir Omer says Reb Pinchas ben Yoir b'makom sheyesh chilul Hashem afilu avedaso aser. Says Reb Pinchas ben Yoir. But listen, people, if there's you know if there is going to be chilul Hashem, if it is going right, interesting. We saw earlier kiddush Hashem. Now we're seeing the flip side. It sounds like uh, in, maybe you can say Reb Pinchas ben Yoir is taking it even one step further that if it's going to lead to chilul Hashem to desecrating God's name, well then. Don't take the lost object. Give it back. Um, yeah. And I guess like you... Okay, yeah. So, if it's going to lead to Chil Hashem, uh, just give it back. Amr Shmuel says Shmuel, Ta'uso Muteres. His uh, mistake, however, can be exploited. Ki ha de Shmuel, Zabin Mikusi, Lakna de Daiva Bimar de Parzala. That Shmuel was purchasing a golden... Uh, a, a, a copper, a bronze, a copper... Go a bowl from a kusi, but actually, it was gold. It's like you know, you go to like those uh, garage sales and you find like a Monet, you know. So so it turned out that uh, you know, so he thought he, you know, technically, so the kusi thought he was selling a, a copper bowl, but he was actually selling a gold bowl. And Shmuel kind of exploited this scenario. Bedal uh, zuza, and he was selling it for only four zuz. Ve'ivlele chad zuza. I, I think it's, I don't know, the, he paid one zuz extra, or Rashi, I think, says he pays one zuz less. He kind of wanted to, like, kind of show that, like, the, like he wasn't, like, exploiting this situation. Like, there was just a big mess up. Like, oh, he thought it was copper, but it was actually gold, and it was supposed to be four, but it was actually three. I, I don't know, something like that. But basically, it sounds like he exploited the mistake. Ravkana Zavan mi kusi mea ve'esum chaviso bimea Kahana purchased... 120 uh, barrels for the for the price of 100 barrels. Ve'ivla le chazuzet. And again, I don't know. He did something with the money. Amr le chazid alach kosamichna. And he says, "It says, and look, I'm relying upon you." Uh, Rashi gives two girsos, I think, meaning, uh, to, you know, either Rav Kana is saying, "Look, I'm relying upon you," meaning Rav Kana knew that he was getting a, a you know, getting a steal. But um, um, meaning that right. So Rav Kana realized that he was uh, um. You know, getting quite the deal, and he's like, "Look, all right, well, I'm relying upon you. Okay, we good, good." Um, alternatively, it could be that the kusi was saying, "Okay, I'm relying upon you," and uh, Rav Kana just went with it. Ravina Zavan Dikla Hu Vikusi Litzalcho. Ravina purchased a palm tree, he and a kusi, and they were gonna use it for wood. Omar Le the Shamoy, Ravina says to his attendant, Kadam the Aisi may Ikara quickly go ahead and I want you to get me the wood from the from from the from the from the from the from the stump from from the bottom. I guess it's a better wood. The Kusi Minyona Yoda, because the Kusi, I know he's much more interested in just knowing that he got the proper amount. He's not actually as uh, interested in you know or knowledgeable or whatever, like you know, the, the actual, it's more important that he gets a certain amount as opposed to getting a certain quality. So since he is indifferent, I want, I, I would like to get the higher quality stuff. Rav Ashi, Ava Ka'ozil, Ba'orcha Rav Ashi was traveling. Chaza shiv shud de gufna b'pardesa v'toli ba kitofe de inve. There was like a branch of a vine and there was a cluster of grapes on it. Omele de Shemai, Rav Ashi says to his, Attendant, zil chazi i dikusi ninu aisi i disuel ninu lo aisi. Go and see if the vine belongs to a kusi, bring them to me. If they belong to a yid, do not bring them to me. The reason why he was saying that, as we will see in a second, is because he planned to pay for them and a yid would not have accepted his money because he was the great Rav Ashi, whereas a kusi would. Shomahu kusi davayosu bipardesa. There was a kusi in the uh, orchard and he heard this uh, dialogue. Omale. And the kusi says, wait, 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 wait. The kusi shari, what? You could just take it from a kusi? Omele, no. Kusi shokil dme, Yisrael lo shokil dme. No, a kusi will take my money, but a yid won't because, you know, they recognize me and they can say, no, I can't take money from you, whatever. Fine. Gufa amr shmuel said shmuel dina de machuso dino, that the law of the land is the law. Amr Rava says, Rava teido, you should know that dina de machuso dina because the katle dikle, vigashe gishre, ravina alai, they, you know, because after all, the government, they cut down palm trees and they use them to make uh, uh, um, um, uh, bridges. And we travel on those bridges. So from the fact that, you know, from the fact that we travel on them must mean that it's legal to travel on them. It's not considered theft. 
it's not considered theft because the king makes the rules. If the law is that we're you know using these trees to build bridges, we're using these trees to build bridges, and that's okay. Abai says, wait, maybe it's not because of Dina de Malchus Dina. Maybe it's simply that the people gave up hope of ever getting them back. But the Omer Le Rav says, but still, Ilo Dina de Malchus Dina, Echim Yaishe. But Rav says, but, but still, I mean, Yehush Kedi is low Kani, and there's no Yehush and Chini Rishos because it's public property. It's not Chini Maise because it's still wood. Um, it's, it can be like, uh, uh, apparently, I guess it could have been deconstructed. Um, so therefore, Rava says, no, I mean, Yehush Kedi Lo Kani, Yehush alone would not have been enough. Rather, it must be because of Dino Daman Chusadino. Va Lo Ka, Avde Kido Amar Malka. But still, I mean, the, the workers of the king are not exactly following their instructions. Malka Amar Zilu Vakatlu Mikol Baige, Vinu Azlu Vakatlu Mikhad Baige. That the king gave the instructions that don't just take all the wood from one uh, Nebuchadnezzar's place. Go and spread it out, you know, get, get a shtickle from a lot of the people. Uh, so that it's not all on one person. But they go and they take all of it from one location. So they're not exactly doing what they're supposed to be doing. So how are you calling that Dina de Malchus Dina? Shlucha de Malko, Kimalko, Velo, Torah. No, the, the messenger of the king is like the king. And, you know, they're not going to go around and collect, you know, donations from everybody. They're going to go. Get the wood from one place and go weiter. Ve'inu afsed and 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 these uh, people uh, are you know if they don't let's go weiter. The ibaylu the inkut mikule baige umishkol tme. What they should have now these people who are suffering this loss that the king is basically cutting down all their trees. Well, what they should do is they should then go around to all the other people and say, look, we all need to share this burden. Uh, you know, pay me back for 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 my lost trees. And if he doesn't do it, it's on him. Amarava says, Rava, man de mishtikach bevedari para manoso de malka. If you have a bunch of people who keep their, like, grain in the granary, and then everybody, you know, they have, like, ten people who use that granary, and nine of them pulled out their grain, and it, now there's only one person has his grain left, and guess who shows up? The tax man. So he's going to have to pay the taxes for everybody, because his is the grain that's still there. Um, so, and then he goes, and he has to go back to everybody else and say, hey, I covered your tax bill. You got to pay me back. That's if they're all partners there. Aval Arisa, but if he's a sharecropper, well then Arisu sehu de komapik. Then he's only responsible for his own sharecropping stuff. He doesn't need to take care of anybody else. Barmato abarmato mi avet. That if you have people, I guess, of the same neighborhood, and I don't know something to do with the taxes, like they need somebody didn't pay his taxes or needs to pay his taxes. So like, I don't know, so like Shimon needs to pay taxes and they could, but like, I guess he doesn't have anything to pay taxes with. So they can like take a collateral from like Ruvain or something. But Ruvain would only do this for Shimon if it's this year's tax. But if it was last year's tax, well then, period. Well, since the king seems to have been okay with it last year, like, you know, Ruvain's, Ruvain's not going to kind of, Help out Shimon and give away his house for Shimon for last year's tax. Okay. Vomer Rava says, Rava, I the dairy, dairy, betoch atrum. People who like fertilize, like, they like, uh, I guess they bring a whole bunch of animals and animals like then fertilize the fields. So if that's within the, I guess, 2000 Amis of the city, also the Kachmein, so you, a person cannot. Purchase animals from this person. My time because since it's within the trum of the city, so some of the local animals get caught up in his animals, and you might end up buying somebody else's animal. But outside of the trum, you could purchase animals from him. Amravina uh, because there's, you know it's only his animals. Amravina says Ravina, how you buy them? I feel the also. But if the if like uh, animal owners were chasing after this guy and saying, "Hey, wait, our animals are, are in there," well, then even outside of the trum, you shouldn't buy from him. Machers Rava Rava announced Vitamer of Huna. Some say Huna the Salkin the Elev the Nachtin the Sata the people going up to Eretz Yisrael or going down to Bavel. Hi Bar Yisrael the Yoda Saidusa the Kusi. If you have a single Yid who knows testimony for a Kusi velo Tov Umine and they didn't ask him to testify. But nonetheless, he goes on his own. 
Be'asid lei bedine de kusi, and he testifies for the kusi in the kusi's uh, uh, courts. Al Yisrael chavre about he testifies against a yid. Misham tina lei we excommunicate excommunicate this fellow, the testifier. My time I'll come to inu mafke mamona apuma dechad because the kusi in courts will rely upon the, only the testimony of one witness in order to uh, be mechayev somebody. So basically, if you have a yid who knows testimony, uh, uh, supporting testimony for a kusi against another yid, um, and we're talking about in kusi in courts where one witness is enough, and he goes on his own volition and provides this testimony, so we excommunicate him because they're going to rely upon one witness in order to be mechayev is, 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 uh, this other yid, um, and of course, in, in you know, in, in, in Jewish law, one witness is, is not enough. And therefore, you know, he can't do something in the Kusi law that would be against our law. So, Vlamar and El Achad, but that's only if he's one witness of Abitre, but two witnesses, lo, well, then that's fine because it's not violating any of our laws, and two witnesses is two witnesses. I mean, if they know testimony, they know testimony. Vichad Nami, Lo Amar, and El Abedine de Megista, and also the issue with one witness is only in sort of like these smaller Kusi in courts, Ava Beidaver, but if it's like a bigger, more official court, Inunami, Chad, Amumoso, Shadu Le, well, in the sort of more established, I guess, Kusi in courts, um, they would also only rely upon one witness to be Mechaev Ashvuah, but not as actual testimony to be Mechaev, you know, actual money. Um, Rav Ashi says, Rav Ashi, Kevina Bey, so it says Rav Huna, which wouldn't make any sense, because Rav Ashi was like, yeah, Rashi was not interacting with Rafuna. Um, so there's a gear that changes it to Rav Kahana, so which would make more sense. Uh, there were two Rav Kahanas. One Rav Kahana, I believe, was the Rebbe of Rav Ashi. The other Kahana, Rav Kahana, was the student of um, Rav. And I think as we're going to see, I think in another three days, a famous story with Rav Kahana and Rav Yochanan, when Rav Kahana moved to Eretz Yisrael. Anyways. Rav Ashi, so Kiavina be Rav, be Rav Kahana, we asked, so what if you have an important fellow, an expert, they would rely upon as though he was two witnesses. So since they, in the Kusin courts, they would rely upon this expert uh, as though he were two witnesses and they would be, and they would actually be Machayev somebody Mamun based on his testimony, which is would be against Jewish law. Odilma, right, so therefore, um, he should refrain from testifying. Odilm, or perhaps, given Dalim Choshibu, since he's an important figure, Lomotzi Mishtamit Lehu Umasi Lasude. So he can't just, you know, ignore them and he can't slip away and he has to testify. Teku Echveis Nisht Amr. I feel like this Teku is Taka more, not necessarily an Echveis Nisht, but more like, look, we can't tell you what to do here. This is a tricky scenario. Amr of Ashi says, Of Ashi, I bar Yisrael, the Zovin le are lo evit kuchovim, a metzur de bar Yisrael, chavre. Misham tinon le. However, there's a locha called the Dina de bar Metzur, which I believe we are going to get to in Mesechta Bovet Mitzia that is coming up. Dina de bar Metzur, if I'm not mistaken, what it means is if um, you are selling, like for example, uh, uh, I live here uh, in the part, in the building that I live in. There are uh, six apartments. So um, now it would be very nice if the apartment next to us, if it was for sale, that they should come to us first and say, hey, you know, do you want to purchase this apartment? Because, you know, maybe then you can expand your apartment, right? So Dino de Bar Metzer, if I'm not mistaken, what it means is that if you're selling your property, you should first go to your neighbors and say, are you interested in purchasing this property before you make it available to other people? So... And um, Omer Ravashi says, Ravashi, Hai Bar Yisroel, Tuzoven Le, Ayr Lo Eve Kuchovim, a Yid who sells a, a property to an Eve Kuchovim, a Metzud de Bar Yisroel, and this, and his neighbor is a Yid, right? So you have, uh, you know, Ruven sells his property, and his next door neighbor is Shimon, and nonetheless, Ruven sells it to an Eve Kuchovim, Misham Tino Le, to excommunicate Ruven, my time out, come, Ine, Misham Tino de Bar Metzre, if because of, well, he violated Dino de Bar Metzre, should have first gone to Shimon and offered it to him first. For Amr Maibu, we said, Zovin me Akum, if you purchase a field from an Akum, for Zovin le Akum, or if you sell a field to a Akum, Lekum Misham Tino de Bar Metzre, there's no problem of Dino de Bar Metzre when it involves an Akum. El de Amrinon, de Amri le, I boys li Arye Amitzroi. No, rather, the point is that Shimon says to Reuven, Shimon, Shimon says to Reuven, Reuven, what are you doing? How come you sold it to this guy? He's, he's, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna harass me. 
Mishamtina lay, so he excommunicate Reuven, Ad the Kabil Ole until he accepts upon himself, call Onsa de Osi Machmose, that if anything happens to Shimon, because of uh, this sale, and because of his new neighbors, um, Reuven will um, uh, be responsible for it. Chevre, that was Daf uh, Kufyud Gimel of Mesechta Bavakama. We learned basically uh, one uh, Mishnah and all of its Gemara. Uh, we learned actually Taka, Chevre. This Daf was some really interesting stuff here. Really interesting stuff. Famous stuff, interesting stuff. Dino de Malchus Adino, Kiddush Hashem, Chilol Hashem. That's interesting stuff. Um, all right, Chevre, we're, mo- we're moving, we're, mamash, we're marching ahead. Towards the finish line over here at Mesech Tabav Akama. And um, yes, thank God. I mean, the, oh, these last stops have not been as difficult, which is very, very, very welcome. So, have a peace out.